Welcome to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. And, and Bubba, I mean, here we are. We're back. I hope you had a good break last week. Uh, I did. Uh, has anything happened since we were gone? Yeah, I tell you, we take a week off and the world changes, doesn't it? Boy, it does. But you know what we're reaching for today? A calming voice. That's right. A calming voice. Uh, we love him. Professional noticer, New York Times, best-selling author, uh, all-around good fella, and friend of the program, Andy Andrews, is with us. Andy, welcome to Rick and Bubba University. Hey, guys. How are you? You know, we're doing great, Andy. I mean, don't you love this world of podcasts now? I know you have a podcast, and and uh, everything's at andyandrews.com. But, you know, this is kind of that flow. You know, sometimes when you're doing TV shows and radio shows, you know, there's the stop and start, stop and start. And, look, we know your style. You're, you're a long-form guy. So so I, you, 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 are a, you're a, you're a perfect podcast guest. That's a nice way of saying you can't get me to shut up when you're wanting to go to a commercial. Well, I'm glad you said it so I didn't have to. Andy, we really wanted you to be in studio because we enjoyed your grapefruit you brought us before. That's right. And we thought we might get some more of those. But given the COVID-19 situation, uh, this is a better way. Yeah, yeah, this is better. Well, I could spray them down for you. (laughs) Well, before we jump into the, the beginning, and that was the pandemic, I do want to talk to something. And we were talking about our hair. You know, Andy mm-hmm. looks fantastic with his blonde hair, and Bubba, you with your blonde hair, and yeah. and me with <laughs> with my my darker hair. Uh, and uh, but but there are a lot of folks, and Speedy's one of them, and and then others like Greg. He's how about it's not fun to lose your hair. I mean, nobody really wants to do that. And if losing your hair, you know, is something that's bothering you, what if I said that you could stop the process and never leave the couch? Now, if you're losing your hair, you got to know Keeps K E E P S. Keeps offers the generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products that are on the market. That's the real deal, and the generic versions save you a fortune. It is very simple. Just answer a few questions online, uh, snap a few pics of your hair, and a doctor will review everything and recommend the right FDA-approved hair loss treatment for you. Then it ships discreetly to your door. Now, you're probably wondering, will it work? Rick and Bubba, Andy, will it work? Well, uh, 60%, 66% of all the men that have used this have experienced hair regrowth thanks to our friends at Keeps, 66%. Uh, So losing your hair is not a lot of fun. Let's do something about it, and here's the deal. I got you. Go to keeps.com slash Rick Bubba, Rick Bubba, to get your first order of Keeps hair loss treatment, listen to me, for 50% off, half off. That's keeps.com slash Rick Bubba, keeps.com slash Rick Bubba. So, Andy, uh, I know that we're going to talk more about uh, how to kill 11 million people, and we've got a, a re-release, a paperback, and some things that have been added to this incredible book. But, man, you were like us. I think we've been a little blindsided uh, by this uh, by this pandemic, and, and now more than ever, uh, we, we need to, to remember the history of the world and certainly the history of our, our country uh, because for this generation, uh, this pandemic is a biggie, and there's a lot of things about it that uh, – you know, maybe people don't know you got a great YouTube video out there that you can go and see. You know, we've been through tough things before. We have. You know, there is some perspective about it. And and if you remember when Roosevelt was elected the first time and he made that speech, you know, everybody's heard the only thing we had to fear is fear itself. But people don't really remember where it came from or what the context was. And it was done in that first inaugural speech he did, and it was at the uh, uh, in the middle of the Depression. And we always think of the pre- Depression being an economic uh, disaster, and of course it was. But this was during a time that there were no vaccines, really, for anything. And uh, people were uh, sick, and a lot of them were dying. Uh, tuberculosis, the mortality rate for tuberculosis was on the incline. And, uh, of course, Roosevelt gave that speech sitting in a wheelchair because he had gotten polio 12 years before. And and so I I think about that time and I think about how I guess you hear, you know, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And of course, if you guys probably remember that being used on the Andy Griffith show in the Haunted House episode (laughs) when. When uh, Andy said to Barney, Barney, the only thing we had to fear is fear itself. And Barney said, well, that's what I got, brother, fear <laughs> itself. And, no, you're right. And, you're right. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, it, it does. It kind of it, it does affect us strangely. And 
it's a it's a function of our imaginations most time. I mean, if you look at what fear really is, it's a creative misuse of the imagination God gave us. Um, you know, because nowhere nowhere in the Bible does it say that we should be afraid. In fact, over and over again, it says fear not and don't be afraid. And and uh, and the the problem that we have right now that fear could cause is it could distract or slow down um, or totally stop the efforts to find a vaccine because we're going to find a vaccine. Now, it's it's going to take a while, but it's not going to take like it's not going to take the time that it took for so many others because we have so much experience now uh, in you know we're ahead of the game. We we've done in the past hundred years vaccines for for polio and tuberculosis and measles and mumps and uh, typhoid and cholera and uh, the swine flu and uh, the rotavirus and and all those are viral infections. All of them were. So they're dealing with a different version of something they've already done. So there is is hope, but we got to be smart about it too. Yeah. The, the part that I think we were trying to say, because, you know, I, I tend to be in the camp and I openly admit this, that I think everything's always exaggerated and overblown. <laughs> yeah. So I'm always going to be the guy that says that's ah, not as bad as everybody says. So, so I had to be convinced that all these you know, radical uh, procedures, shutting down sports, shutting down concerts, shutting down you know, conferences, shutting down school, uh, ending commencements. And I was thinking to myself, is this really necessary? But to your point, uh, what, what I realized was, okay, wait a minute. This is also another thing that I love, and that's action, uh, to be proactive to actually not just talk about a problem, but actually try to solve a problem. And I realized that if we will just do these things for a short period of time, and they are extreme, uh, but again, not as extreme as some things people have, have been through in the past, but for us in our culture, extreme, uh, if we'll do these things, we can minimize the impact on people that it's going to kill. Uh, and as you have stated, it's certainly not the first time in world history and not the first time in American history where somebody says something's here that we've never experienced before. Um, you know, right. yeah, that's not the first time that's ever happened, and as you have just said, and reassuringly, and we found a way to resolve it. But you want to minimize, until we get to the solution, the number of people that may die unnecessarily. And, and I think and, and that's a, a, big part of, a big part of minimizing that is going to be, um, as you guys probably know, talking to our teenagers and the young adults. Because, uh, you know, down here... Uh, in Orange Beach, man, there there are still kids out on the beach. There's still tons of people, and and if if you look at at what the the researchers say right now, is that that age can be infected and never show symptoms, which means that they they carry it, yeah. and uh, the virus can live on hard surfaces for up to six days, and on soft and moist surfaces longer than that, obviously, but. But the thing is that it's not really going to affect those young people that much. But to carry it to their grandparents or uh, to their parents who are old, like me, you know, I'm an old dad. And it, it's, a, it's something that we have to get across to them that uh, just for the sake of, you know, people with diabetes and people with asthma and all these other things that put people at risk for some kind of, of, of breathing disease, because what we really have to do is slow it down. We have to slow it down because we can't all get sick at once. You know, th there is a mortality rate on this that is bad. Now, the good news if if there is good news, you know, you say there's a 3% mortality rate. That, that's the highest I've heard. But that also means there's a 97% survival rate. And so you know, I'm not being flippant about that because that's there are people who are going to die. But we can minimize that and we can slow it down to give these guys time. 
Yeah, it's uh, Andy. It's just it's just such a shift into what we're used to in America now. We're a microwave society. We we're moving. We're shaking. We're doing six things, and then it's kind of all just come to a halt. But it's something we had to do. And you know, too, I think uh, when this is all said and done, and we're back to normal, uh, if you would. I think we're going to have to look at our uh, defense posture and, and what we're doing. And, you know, honestly, I think we, as the world, got caught a little flat-footed on this one, and we're going to have to be more aware of how these things can spring up and spread very, very quickly, uh, and and we're not really prepared for it. Even though I think the response has you been know, very good since we got in the game, it takes a little time. Yeah, but, you, you know – Man, if I if I told you, or if you came and told me that uh, our defense department was gonna buy all their weapons, all their ammunition, all the planes, all the ships, all the bombs and missiles, all the defense stuff, all the it just it, that we were gonna buy everything for our military from China, you'd say, well, I I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that. And, yeah, and yet. And, and yeah, we shuttered our last ability to make antibiotics in this country in 2004. And there are currently 153 drugs that varying numbers of people in America need that if they don't have them, they're dead in a week. And 153 of those are made in China. Yeah, there's a lot of lessons we've learned. Have y'all caught the irony of what we just talked about, about the young people? is here we are, you know, the, the older generation, and, and we keep talking about this, we have, saying there's things that we have to stop doing and we got to get rid of the mentality talking about us that it really doesn't matter because it ain't going to affect us and load all this debt and all these problems on the younger people. Now, here we are begging those same people, hey, you got to care about us, just don't care about yourself. <laughs> there's a lot of irony in that right now. Isn't that amazing? I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, as we were talking, that, that just is amazing. That, that just hit me. How many times we say, "Hey guys, look, we got to get out of this mentality. Just keep running up the debt, keep doing what we're doing." But it may not affect us. But we got to care about people other than ourselves and care about the next generation. Now we're running to that generation, and say, "Care about us." <laughs> and uh, so, it, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's, that's a great true. that's a great irony right now. Hey, I just happened to think of another another Andy Griffith reference. There is, uh, yeah, and this this actually uh, references vaccines being found. But remember when uh, Andy and Aunt B were sitting on the back or the front porch? That's back when we sat on front <laughs> right, porches. Right, right, yeah. And um, and and somebody said something about going along behind the ice truck and grabbing a piece of ice out of that sawdust and eating it. And Andy said, you know, a lot's gone out of life since then, hadn't it? And Aunt B said, yeah, typhoid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to tell you, too, talk about this now. You know, we're sitting around now. We're binge watching and everything. I don't know if you guys know about ExpressVPN uh, because it's it, it, this is a great simple solution because sometimes you're sitting there and you want to get on your you know your netflix or or whatever and you're wanting to watch something that may not be available to you unless you can go in and access you know the netflix maybe in the uk uh, and so you just fire up if you want to do that now it's the express vpn app and that way it changes your location all right i'm now i'm now not the united states i'm now the uk so now i can go watch the show that i don't have available uh, on my Netflix here in my country. That's all you do. It's Express VPN. It hides your IP address and lets you control uh, where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost a hundred different countries. So just think about all that Netflix libraries are available to you now because now you can view the Netflix libraries around the world, not just in your own country. It's not just Netflix. I mean, Express VPN works on any streaming service, Hulu. BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason we love Express VPN to watch shows is how fast it is. There's there's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream in HD with no problem. Express VPN is also compatible with all your devices, your phones, your media consoles, smart TVs, and more, so you can watch what you want to and then put it right there on the big screen. Not a problem at all. So if you, if you visit the special link that Bub and I have right now, 
It's expressvpn.com slash Rick Bubba. That's Rick Bubba. You can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash Rick Bubba. Andy, uh, let me ask you this. Aside from the pandemic that we're having in the world right now, uh, how, how was life at the <laughs> beach a week ago? You know, it was a lot different a week ago. <laughs> and um, mm. I think I think right now, the only people who are breathing a sigh of relief are the turkey hunters, you know, because turkey hunters are going, hey, I do that by myself. Yeah. Nobody's going to be around me. No, you're right. <laughs> so, well, we had a guy call the show. Was, un- until, you know, until actually until day before yesterday, it was still packed down here. Now, I- I've got this new studio at the wharf here. And uh, I am looking outside at the wharf. And since we started talking, there has not been a single person walk by. And I can see not only our, the top side of ours, but I can see both, you know, the, the bottom and the top of the other side. I mean, nobody is here. Yeah, we heard a rumor that maybe in Alabama, that's where we're, Andy, that's what we're talking about, no matter where you're listening or, or watching this, that they may force – the shutdown of Orange Beach and Gulf Shores, uh, so that may be going on. Maybe you're seeing that that may that information may be getting out, Andy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know either. I know that there there are a lot of uh, a lot of people that are very nervous about their businesses, and oh, yeah. as as you can imagine. But the only thing that I can figure, and tell me what you guys think about this, you know, in a, in a normal situation, which I. I suppose, you know, if somebody has tough times in their business in a normal situation, you know, the bank would put pressure on them or, or whatever. But at, at this point, you know, it's like we say a rising tide make, you know, ra- raises all the boats. Well, yep. a, a sinking tide, you know, everybody just kind of stays at the same level yep. because this is everybody. And I can't, I, I don't know that we have that much to worry about there because I can't see the bank foreclosing on everybody, right? Well, if, you know, our federal government is talking about they're doing things like, look, let's let's let everybody. We know it's tough. We know you're struggling. We're going to take the pressure off a little bit. You even hearing the utility company saying, look, we're not going to come cut the water off and cut things off at the at the normal, you know, uh, time period that we would in the past, and and that. So I think there is going to be some leniency there because we are in some unprecedented waters, especially modern times, on how do you handle people not having income when it's not their fault well they froze uh, you know, it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not like they were irresponsible or they would yeah. they don't right. they're not working or they did bad business planning this is nothing that anybody thought they would deal with from a, a professional standpoint well if i understood correctly yesterday the president froze uh you know companies defaulting uh on loans and stuff so at least for 90 days so that'll, that'll right. give everybody a chance to catch your breath and get going again and i know uh even as we're doing this podcast, the president is speaking, and uh, the FDA says they, they're making progress. They're already testing some existing drugs. They fast-track some other, and that they have 10,000 doctors working on this around the clock. So there you go. Right. And, and, you, and that's where you yeah. got to be excited so about the got, time you're living in, yeah? Yeah, it, it, it's a new normal for a while, and so I, I think – you know, I've I've talked to some people about, hey, just let's just find a way to be valuable to each other during this time. I I'm, you know, when we get through here, I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna I was supposed to be reading a children's book today at a school. And so I you know, I thought, well, I could read it and they could send it to all of them. Then we thought, well, why don't I just read it and we'll put it on YouTube? And so yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to read several things, and we'll put it on our YouTube channel. And and um, so we're going we're going we're just trying to figure out a way to be valuable because all my dates have been canceled. And then yeah, then too. we find out yesterday that uh, Amazon calls the publisher and says, "Yeah, we know you have a book release, but we're not going to be buying anybody's book, or we're not taking anybody's book for a while because we're just going to buy essentials." And stock essentials, and so um, I know. So you know, we're we're just directing everybody to AndyAndrews.com for the books, and fortunately, we have some. So well, good, and we'll talk about this. But you make the point. You know, I have, uh, as you know, a son who's an actor, and uh, he lives from gig to gig to gig, and every single gig he's got has been canceled. 
uh, and uh, and right. then, and then I'm you know I'm I'm thankful that I have the Rick and Bubba show. But if I was only making a living off going and doing speaking dates, uh, my speaking dates are canceling every day. There's a new group that comes in and says, "Hey, we're going to push it back, postpone, not do it at all." And uh, so these are these are lines of work that you thought always would be available to you. But if you're knocking down, you realize how many things you destroy oh, when yeah. you say people don't gather in big groups. Yeah, that's you, a lot. You, des- yeah. you, you destroy a lot of stuff. But the good news is, um, transitioning to the book, is you can go to andyandrews.com. Now, this book, I remember we talked to you about it. I think we talked to you about it when we yeah, were at the beach. we did. But, Andy, yeah. let me let me ask you this before we get to that. Is your wife getting tired of you being around the house all the time? Boy, but our wives are. Man, I'm telling you, first day home, she already filed a harassment charge with HR. So. <laughs> well, the good news are busy. They won't get to it. Look, uh, yeah. Andy, I caught my wife looking at my speaking date calendar saying, are all these canceled? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, you know, Polly's the same way. Polly's, she asked me uh, yesterday, I was up in the kitchen in the afternoon talking to her, and she said, don't you need to go to your office and write something? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my wife said to me. Yeah, I guess I, I did. My wife said to me, "I miss missing you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a backhanded way of saying. Isn't it. Isn't that a Rolling Stone song? Yeah, that may have been. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the paperback release of "How Do You Kill Eleven Million, Million People." When you were talking about this pandemic, I started thinking to myself: Believe it or not, these two topics actually do go together pretty well because, as you said. You know, it's it's it doesn't all happen at once, and before you know it, you know things are happening and getting out of control. And you and you made that point about how you kill eleven million uh, eleven million people. Why the truth matters more than you think. It's now coming out in paperback, but it's not just in paperback. You also uh, have expanded it, and you you've added some 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 different things to this paperback release of the book. So tell me if I'm getting the paperback. First of all, if you never had the original, well, then you need to get it anyway because I'm not losing the original concept, right? It, it's it's just the paperback version, right. but we're adding stuff to it. So tell me, tell me first of all, let's start. Let's assume there's somebody listening to this podcast or watching it. They don't even know what the first book. They don't know what we mean when we talk about the New York Times bestselling. How do you kill 11 million people? So tell us first of all what the book original the original concept, and then what are the bonuses for those of us that may have gotten the first one. Right. Well, the original concept was I, for a long, long time, I wanted to write something that did not say Republican, did not say Democrat, did not say liberal or conservative, and yet everybody would agree with it. And for a long time, I thought, that's just crazy. Right. It's, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to do that. But then I, I thought, well, there are some things that we agree on, you know, and and that so that little concept was going on, you know, because we we agree we want the best for our children. We uh, we all, uh, you know, there's there's several things like that that we want. And and then over on this side, you know, other times I, I really am curious about World War Two. And I was really curious about the Holocaust because. There's something that bothered me about that beyond the obvious, and I couldn't really put my hands on what it was that felt so strange. And when I finally figured out, I I thought, I know why I'm being so bothered by this is how do you do this? How do you, you know, how do you actually kill 11 million people? I'm not saying what method do you use? We know how they did it. We know the methods they used. And I'm not saying how crazy do you have to be, because history is full of people who have pulled something like this off. I I was saying, how do you get 11 million people to participate Mm -hmm. with you as you kill them? I mean, for uh, week after week, after month after month, for several years, and we've seen the pictures, the the uh, the guards there, you know, there's a Nazi guard with a machine gun, and then 10 yards away, there's another one, and then 10 yards away, there's another one. And thousands of people loading themselves onto rail cars. And I, I would look at that and i go, why don't they run? Why don't they rush these guys? Why, why are they not fighting? 
and and it, it just really baffled me. And so I did a ton of research to find out how do you do this? How do you manage right. to get these people to calmly load themselves onto boxcars, you know, f- for years? And when I found the answer, it was so simple and so stunning. I just I just kind of lived with it for a while, it's, and it, it stunned me not only in its simplicity and its effectiveness, but it stunned me because it's a it's a method still being used on us today in one form or another, and we're certainly very uh, very prone to fall to this. It, but the the answer is you lie to them, right? You you lie to them, and there was a policy of lies. I I uncovered a. Uh, it, it, I mean, a written policy, you know, this is not just, Hey, here's an idea. Here's something you ought to do. There was a written policy of how to get these people to do this. And there were, there were th- three things, you know, the first thing they would do is they would circle their neighborhoods in barbed wire. They call, called them ghettos later. And, um, and what, and they would tell them that this was, a part of the war effort and keeping families together. We're keeping neighborhoods separate. And with the war effort, we want to keep people safe. And so, and, and so they, if they didn't buy that, there was the second part where the, uh, the Nazis would go in and meet with the leaders inside these neighborhoods and accept bribes. They would accept bribes from these Jewish leaders and and uh, and so the Jewish leaders would go back inside and talk about it and it, it was done so that they would do what they did, which is they said, well, if they were gonna kill us and take everything anyway, they wouldn't accept bribes. they would just kill us. So we're going to be okay. You know, so they're be, they're paying bribes for better treatment. And then the third part of that lie was they would bring them all out into a courtyard one day with the train right there. And there would be uh, luminaries from the town that were there as well as the Nazi contingent, very few guns, very few guns. And, um, and it, it's, and I got a hold of the speech. It's reprinted in the book. And it's a speech that they would give telling them that now we can tell you what has been going on. The uh, Russians are advancing on this territory and we're taking you to safety. We already have a place lined up. Uh, there's going to be uh, jobs for, for you. There's schools for the children, houses, and the women can stay home and, <clears throat> and, and uh, take care of the house and the children. Uh, factories already in place, jobs. And, and so... Uh, you're going to be taken care of, but we're going to be very, very crowded on the train, but it's a very short way. And so, uh, fathers, please keep your families together and quickly, we must hurry, load yourselves onto these trains. And they put themselves on the trains. And, and then when they closed the doors and put the locks on them, it was over. Right. Because the trains did not stop until they, you know, got to Sobibor or Treblinka or Auschwitz or uh, one of 15,000 camps that they had these people in. Wow. That are verified today. So at the root of it all, as you said in the subtitle, why the truth matters more than you think it does. It, it's so important uh, to know the truth. Um, what about the things, if I've already read the book, and, and of course I want the paperback copy, and, and there's some bonus things that have been added this time. What, what are some of those things? Yeah, I'm really excited about these things because, uh, you know, the book itself, it, it, it worked. It was, uh, it was the, and then people still use it, you know, people still say, you know, cause, cause it's priced low enough that people can give it as a gift and, Everybody agrees with it, right? Um, is it because the the premise is that it doesn't matter who you talk to, uh, what background they have, or anything you can ask. Do you believe that our leaders should be able to lie to us, or should they tell the truth? 
And everybody says, oh, they should tell the truth. So everybody agrees with it. Well, then it gets into some more things about voting that once you've agreed that they should tell us the truth, then there's some other things to read. Well, as the book did what it did, uh, over the past several years, I've heard people begin to argue about, well, the Constitution says da 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 Well, that's not constitutional. And, and well, you know, in the Declaration of Independence, didn't they say so-and-so? And, you know, our founding fathers didn't mm-hmm. intend. And, and I'm probably like you guys. I've got a lot of friends that – they don't really know what the Constitution says. Correct. <laughs> they, yeah. they, don't really, they, don't, they don't really know what the founding fathers no. really thought. No, you're right. And and so, uh, you know, a lot of us rely on what somebody says that they said. And so so what I decided to do is to find some things. And, and here's what we put in here. This is actually in this book. I mean, the book has gone for the hardback of it was 96 pages and this book is now uh 210 right so we added a bunch of stuff um we put uh uh, reprinted the constitution reprinted uh the declaration of independence and reprinted most of common sense by thomas Paine, and then we've got uh, uh george washington with uh a letter see these are letters not to the public. These are letters to their friends. So we can discern what are they really thinking in their private time. So George Washington is talking about the question of rebellion in this letter. And then there's John Dickinson and Thomas Jefferson back and forth in letters on the causes and necessities of taking up arms. And we got a, a John Adams, a letter to William Cushing. Um, then, uh, let's see, Thomas Jefferson, a letter talking on decentralized government and the judiciary. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, a letter on the uh, pursuit of power and position. Then we've got the Bill of Rights in there as well, and the first inaugural address of Thomas Jefferson. And after a few years, have Noah Webster's oration uh, reprinted, uh, and this was on the anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, because I, I think that there's so much of our history that can guide us. Right. But you got to actually know it. You, you have to know it, you know, and I, I know this has been used so many times that I've heard it, but when I heard it, you know how you have that ding, 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 ding? One of those <laughs> moments, going one moments you're going, yeah. I will never forget this example. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. And And this was talking about you can apply it to biblical truth, you can apply, apply it to what this – you're talking about to historical truth. And and what I was told is, you know, the Secret Service also deals with counterfeit, counterfeit currency. And and they said they never show them counterfeit currency. They don't learn what counterfeit currency looks like. What they do is learn what the genuine, genuine article looks like. And they know the genuine article, the truth, so well that they immediately spot counterfeit because compared to the genuine article – it's obviously a counterfeit. And I thought that's great. Ding 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 ding, up, ding, yeah. ding 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 ding. Well that that's why we have to know the truth so we can recognize the lie. You can't recognize yeah. a lie if you don't know the truth. That's great. That is really great. And you know, there's a here here's some here's a story I, I don't think I've ever told you guys. When this book came out uh first and I went up to uh, New York to do, you know, the, you know how you guys have done this. And you go up there and you're on a bunch of television shows and all. And I was on one because I was on my way to Fox and uh, they canceled. And hmm. they and uh, uh, according to the guy on the phone, Sean Hannity said, uh, we love Andy, but we can't do anything with this book. And so. I, I didn't go on fights for that. I went, but I did one television show while I was up there. I did MSNBC. Oh boy. <laughs> and and uh, when I got home the next day, uh, my phone rang and it said blocked caller. Now at the time that was either Nancy Lopez or Bill Gaither. And I like <laughs> them both. So I answered the phone, <laughs> but it, it was the, uh, the wife of uh, a, a Supreme court justice. And she was not happy. And she told me how she got the number. And she said, I saw you on MSNBC yesterday. And I was very disappointed. 
Have I ever told you this? No. No. Uh-uh. no. Oh, you, Please do. By I, the way, I'm a, I'm, I, I'm on the line. Reel me yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. And I I said, well, what did I do? I'm trying to think. What the heck? And and she she said, well, it's not what you did. It's what you didn't do. She said you had him right where you wanted him. You had him and you did not tell him. And my husband and I have read your books for years and we feel like we know how you think and and you you had him. And if we don't start telling these people, da, 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 and she just went on and I, I just let her talk. And, and then I finally said, you know, you're right. I did not tell him. Um, I said, can I tell you why? And she said, sure, I'd like to know why. And I said, well, the reason is because I I really believe that in our country today we have a leadership vacuum. Now we have leaders and we have people who fill these positions, uh, but for the most part, you know, you got fifty percent of the country following somebody, and then they put somebody else in and totally erase what the first guy did, and yeah. it, it, then somebody else gets in, they totally erase what they did, and that goes back and forth, and nobody's really following. It's just like it's gotten worse and worse. And and I said, so we have a leadership vacuum. We have a, 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 a misunderstanding of what leadership really is. Leadership, the essence of leadership is influence, and the essence of influence is agreement, not disagreement. You don't follow somebody that you disagree with. You, you know, you can't lead people who fundamentally disagree with you. And so we already know the things we disagree on. And what we have to find is something that we do agree on. And, and so I, with that guy on MSNBC, I said, you know, he could have Googled me and found out very quickly that he disagreed with me on almost everything. But he was nice and I didn't push him. I said, because one of the things that we do agree on is that we want the best for our kids. We want the best for our country. And she said, yeah, 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 OK. But then now you got to figure out what the best is. I said, well, that's right. I said, but if we make a an honest search for the best. The best, whatever that is, is one thing. There may be different categories, but we're not talking about among the best or some of the best of the decade. We're talking about the best. What is the best? And if you honestly want the best for our country, you know, in, in different categories, that's one thing. And so, you know, the, the best is like the truth, right? We want to be told the truth. And the truth different categories, but the truth is one thing. Now, here's something very curious. And I told her this. I said, you can, you can know the truth and not have the best. You, you can know the truth and still not go after the best. I said, but you will never get the best without knowing the truth. Well, and, and did she – I'd like to know how that ended. I mean, did, did she go – uh, she has she has continued to talk to me. She you. has continued. <laughs> she's called several times. She's written several well, times. Well, that's good. And I, she began, and I, I think she began to understand that because as mad as I get sometimes when I watch some of these people, yeah. I, I do understand at, at, at some point, I mean, you, you remember when Reagan – was president, you know, Tip O'Neill and Reagan, they would duke it out on TV and then go out to dinner with their families and ha or have drinks together. I mean, can you see any of these guys doing any of that today? Uh, and yeah, so yeah, you're at, saying that at, don't, don't offend just for the sake of, I don't mean offend. Don't, don't argue for the sake of argument. That's a better word. And, uh, but because you want to try to keep the conversation going and you're hoping you can work for the thing you use, the things that everybody in a civil world, of course, I, I'm not sure we can always say that as, as much as we once could, because there's some people that honestly want something that at one time we thought nobody wanted. Right. Uh, but so that's changed a little bit. But I understand what you're saying in general. F let's work on these principles that we agree on. At some point, we'll have to come to the conclusion. I remember one time when Bubba and I, before he passed away, Alan Combs, when it was Hannity and Combs, and and we liked Alan. Alan certainly didn't agree with us. I don't no. know. On, I don't no, know. but he was a nice. I don't guy, know on yeah. anything. 
But I remember the time that we were on, and Bob, I don't know if you remember this or not. And you know, he was. We were talking about spiritual issues, and he he didn't agree with us on spiritual issues. And and we were talking about you know how we've removed these concepts that once were in the schools, including our founding fathers, that had to do with faith. And and you know he wasn't necessarily agreeing on that. And then we said, well, let's talk about what we agree on. The government schools right now, I don't think any of us like the way they look. I mean, do we like what's going on with our children? What do we like? What's going on with the violence? Are, and, are we getting what we yeah, set out to get? Yeah, you know, and, are we happy with the results? And we said, you know, when we did these things, whether you believe they have any true value or not, apparently the way we did it before was better than what we're doing now. Let's don't get specific. Do you agree with that concept? You know what he said? Yes, I do agree with that. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Because see what you did right there, you went with him to the foundation. You know, we we have had uh, we we have had the why taken out of us since we were little kids. Yeah, you know, when you're a little kid and your dad finally says, "Hey, quit asking me why about everything." I just don't. You know, you're driving me crazy. So we don't ask why, and and now. We only ask why when something's wrong, and when we get an answer, we quit asking why. And here's what I mean by that. I don't mean to, like, smoke up the area, but the, <laughs> the, the, the problem yeah. with, Andy with stopping asking why when you get an answer is a lot of times that answer is not at the foundation. That answer can be true, but not the truth. And so you see that a lot of times watching these politicians talk, they'll they'll get an answer or give an answer and it'll be true, but it solves nothing because it's not at the foundation. And and so in it, it, it's like, you know, things can be true and not the truth. It's like if we took a blind guy and and said, okay, we have this animal here, and uh, you've never heard of it before. We got it in a barn. It's called an elephant. We're going to give you a few minutes with it. I want you to tell us what an elephant is like and uh, how it could be used in society. And so after a few minutes, say the blind guy comes back and says, well, it's uh, very tall, very wide, uh, kind of flat, dense. Uh, you could use it for a gate, several of them for a wall. Well, that's true. It's not the truth. I see. Yeah. It's just true. I mean, until we knew the truth about an elephant, we'd never have a complete picture or know how many different ways it could be used. And and all that, you know, you can talk about all the school violence and 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 right. But until you get to the foundation, right. where no, I got what, you. What was the cause? Yeah, we we talked about this on the air. Bubba used the analogy, and it, it even made it to the Senate floor one day. And you're and exactly what you're talking about because people are saying we got to go down to the core of what are we doing that keeps producing these type of people, as opposed right. as opposed to it's true that we don't want this and it's true that what they did was bad and it's true you don't shoot people in cold blood and it's true we need better security, but we also need to get to the foundation why why is our society uh, producing these types of evil individuals and Bubba you used the analogy about if you if you if you've got water on the first floor of your house or building. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stop the leak before you start mopping up, or you just you know you just continually mop. Right, it, 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 and that's kind of what you're talking about. You can mop all day on the first floor, uh, and but right. until you go up to the second floor and find the toilet that's leaking, you're just gonna mop, 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 mop. And there, that's there, a great. It appears we are in a mop, mop, mop situation with a lot of things nowadays. Yeah. You know, and so I think what's good about this, and we're running out of time, but what's good about these things you've added to how do you kill 11 million people? is I think that we can't assume anymore that people know the foundation of this country, the foundation of the Constitution, and, and they don't really know the foundational truth. So all these other conversations, even though true statements may be made, they don't understand the foundation of why we do things the way we do and what we were producing uh, throughout history. And if we don't understand the foundation – then these arguments can never really come to a resolution because we didn't start with the foundation of the truth. Right. You can look, you can look at the rise and fall. You could look at a at a static line on a graph, even in America, of of what you know, of what we considered the best we ever were. You know, there's a group of people 
years ago, 70 something years ago. And these people produced more, they sacrificed more, they became more, uh, you know, and we even have a name for them, right? Call them the greatest generation. But I always think that if you go to the foundation of that, they weren't really the greatest generation. It was the adults that raised them. It was the, it, you know, the parents and the teachers of that day. What what standards did they use to raise a generation of people that we still look back 70 years and go, that's the best we ever were? What standards did they use? What were they doing? Now, it's like we said before, if you see something that is successful, here's an idea. Go look at how that was accomplished and maybe apply that again. Yeah. Andy Andrews, thank you for being with us uh, from beautiful Orange Beach, uh, Alabama. It's out in paperback now. Go to andyandrews.com. When you go there, you, you get everything that is Andy Andrews. There's so many resources you can use. But the paperback version of How Do You Kill 11 Million, million People, it, it's there with all of the expanded stuff, including America's Core Principles, as written by the Founding Fathers. Andy, thank you for taking time to be with us. Guys, I always love being with you. Thank you for spending some time with me. And we Thank hope you. we hope we get to get uh, everything back to normal and get to visit with you very soon. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks for what you do, yeah. Andy. Keep doing it. Uh, your voice needs to be heard today. Thanks to all of you uh, here are listening to or watching this latest edition of Rick and Bubba University.